guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be helping you figure out what your theme is and then to empower that theme. Now, the most important aspect of empowering your theme you've already learned is like to use the emotional guidance system, to follow the breadcrumb trail of joy, to know that you're always already aware and perfect, to understand that you're not only a physical mind, but also a non-physical higher mind and a higher self. So you, you got all these tools already in the past lessons to empower your theme. So the most important aspect of this lesson is to actually sort of get into the theme exploration, to investigate, to become a little bit more clear on what is your overall direction for this life? What is your overall blueprint? So again, just to recapture a little bit, a theme is the blueprint which the higher mind or the non-physical mind is always intimately aware of and is always sort of not measuring you in terms of judging you, but gauging how you are doing in terms of whether it needs to nudge you a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right or guide you in some way specifically in order to sort of allow you to remain transparent and efficient in the exploration of your theme. So again, your theme can be viewed as this pre-birth, but I don't like time so much. So instead of pre-birth, let's say simultaneous to your physical walking this path as an incarnational um, physical mind, is the non-physical mind that has an intricate awareness of this blueprint, of this overarching soul intention for this life. And it's always gauging sort of where you're at and using the blueprint or your theme as the GPS to see whether you're off course, you need to take a little left, or you need to take a little right turn, etc. Makes sense, right? It's not too difficult to comprehend. It's like a GPS, like a map. So this is how the emotional guidance system is translated to you. The emotional guidance system is basically your non-physical mind communicating to you how much you are, in a sense, in alignment with your blueprint or theme for this life, your main primordial intention for this life, your primary intention for in what kind of a way to express infinity in this life that you are most suitably created for specifically for that purpose. Don't get me wrong. This does not mean you're stuck in a very, very narrow pathway. You really do have a significant degree of free will as to how you go about executing and exploring that dream and that vision and that blueprint and that theme. But you have to understand that that's actually what you desired before you chose to have this life. So if you think differently about it now, in 99% of the cases, that's because you have learned certain habits and negative definitions that now make you feel like you don't want to do what you actually came here to do. But as soon as you clear out more and more of those definitions, you again become more and more in alignment with the spirit nature of your essence and of your theme. And your desires will once again be aligned with your truer, higher desires. And so then things will really take off for you and life will truly become the enjoyable flight that it is meant to be. Just listen to the emotional guidance system and your intuition and together with all these aspects of your consciousness, with all these tools, you will find the most harmonious and exciting way to you and to you in harmony with each other to then explore this theme of consciousness in a unique way that only you can do. So how do you discover your theme? Now I want you to grab a piece of paper and I want you to write down, maybe make two columns if that makes it easier. And on one column, I want you to write down everything that you have access to in terms of what your highest vision and imagination and excitement for yourself is. Now that can be very abstract. Um, so it might be, for example, maybe you're a school teacher, but you know that the school teacher aspect is just an aspect of your truer overall desire. What you really want is to perhaps um, teach the world enlightenment or to share with planet earth how they can live their lives joyfully and freely. And maybe the school teacher aspect is no longer the most exciting to you, but it's still kind of exciting because it's what you like to do. But you understand now that it was in a sense, a lesser, not less valid then, but a smaller version of your truest desire. It was a smaller representation that you at the time had access to becoming.
and had access in your vibrational field of intuiting and downloading because you didn't know anything yet about spirit journeys and themes and enlightening the world. You just knew what excited you and the closest representation that your higher mind could feed you at that time to your conscious mind with all the constrictions that it had at the time that it no longer has now was become a school teacher. This will train you to become a teacher. And then later on, you will expand into actually sharing messages just as I am with the world. This is of course, just an example. It doesn't have to apply to you in that way at all. Not everyone is meant to necessarily be a verbal teacher of enlightenment. Although in all, in, in some ways, all of us is my belief at this time are here for a general shared theme of our collective theme, which is to brighten up this planet and to transform limitation into lack and negative definitions into positive ones. So to an extent, each of us has as part of their theme to be a teacher of enlightenment for all everybody else. But this ha doesn't have to be in my form at all in the way that I'm doing it. It can be through silence. It can be through art. It can be through a nine to five job. Even in some cases, most often not, but sometimes it can. Um, so there's all these infinite ways to express this, but we do have a shared theme, which is always something in alignment with sharing greater light and brightness with the world, with, with other selves, with the rest of ourselves and finding union and harmony and ascension and enlightenment as a collective. We are all part of that collective heart wiring or blueprint or theme altogether. So you will find that most, most, most likely your individual theme is plugged into this to some extent, at least, or for most of you to a very great extent. Again, don't be insistent upon how that has to express itself because you're always teaching the world a higher vibration simply by being you and being the most exciting and aligned and intuitive version of you. If you do that, you will help the world. You will help the collective consciousness that all agrees to be part of this illusory player that we call planet Earth at this timing you will naturally contribute. You will naturally be teacher, even if you never utter a word about any of the things that I'm telling you here to another human being. So don't put labels on it. Don't constrict what is possible for you. And don't ever judge that you're not being a teacher of enlightenment, because as soon as you are being in alignment with yourself, you are a radiator. You are an example of enlightenment. And so just follow your heart and find your unique expression of that as you go along following the breadcrumb trail of excitement. Again, you can never be there from where you're here now, from where you're at now. You can never fully conceive of what it will be like and what's meant for you 20 years from now, but you can conceive of what's the most exciting to you in this moment. And that's your higher mind, which can see the future probabilities and the direction of your theme. It's what it's feeding you is the, path of least resistance and the most immediate direct route to the exploration of your theme, completing itself in some way, even though there's no end to the journey, but completing a large chunk of that exploration and getting to the point of its theme. It knows how to most efficiently get there. You don't with the physical mind. That's why we need to open up and trust and be receptive and meditate on what we truly are called into being for. And so when we do that, when we do it in this way, then our higher minds are able to actually feed us more clearly the breadcrumb trail of our excitement, which to our mind is just, oh, I really feel like taking a left turn right here, or I really feel like calling my dad, or I really feel like starting to write this book, or I really feel like taking a break right now. So it might not make sense in the bigger scheme of things. You might feel like just reading a few paragraphs out of a book that you're enjoying, but your physical mind might think, well, I have this idea of becoming a teacher of enlightenment. I must be doing this and I must be doing that. Otherwise I'm not getting anywhere. And I'm speaking from a lot of personal experience with this particular time pressure oriented insistence that my physical mind used to have. And in some slight versions, every once in a while still tries to impose upon my experience. So then it's important to understand that if something doesn't truly excite you right now, but it does seem to be in alignment with your theme, it's a either you're blocking it with a negative definition. And therefore the thing that you actually want to do may seem a little repelling and like you don't want to do it. So you have resistance against it because of an unseen, uninvestigated negative belief about it. Or it's simply that right now, the quickest way to actually get to the fulfillment of your theme is to um, is to actually take that break or is to actually read those paragraphs. Even if to the physical mind, it doesn't make sense from a linear point of view, we have to then accept and be humble and realize that 
I do not perceive all these probable timelines. Higher mind does. It communicates to me through the emotional guidance system. If I try to insist upon this path in this way, in this action, it doesn't feel good. There's resistance. Is it because I'm defining it negatively? No, not necessarily. It's because I believe I need to go in that direction. But actually, all that I feel like doing is taking a break right now then you have to trust that and follow and act on the breadcrumb trail of your excitement. Know that that is the quickest way into the fulfillment of your theme, into greater expansion, greater absorption of your theme. So trust that. Now to go back to the piece of paper, the exercise. Create those two columns by dividing a line vertically. And on one end, write down all the highest expansions and thoughts and imaginations and inspirations that you do have access to at this time, that you can imagine enjoying in this lifetime. For example, being a teacher of enlightenment to planet Earth, or um, inventing something new, or whatever it is. But go in that direction of thinking outside of the box, thinking like 10 years from now, thinking into your bigger, higher self, which may not seem immediately practical right now. And download those visions and write some of these things down that you do at this point know vaguely excite you. Again, even if they're very abstract, just write these down and know that these exact visions don't have to come true in that way. And they might not be accurate at all, but they are representations. They are as close as your mind today can come up with to represent what it's actually downloading. And you have the limitations of your physical mind to sort of deal with until you practice it and make it more transparent and imaginative in nature. So it can then more directly receive communications from and as the higher mind. But for now, you're going to interpret these visions in a way that makes sense to your physical mind. So it has to use symbols of things you already know. That's why you can never accurately know what you want to be or do 10 years from now, because you don't have a whole range of frequency um, access yet. You don't have a whole range of ideas and symbols yet that you have never experienced before. So you're going to use what you know to comprise an image of that comes closest as possible to what your higher mind is actually inspiring into you as a vision or inspiration or your thematic exploration for this life. Okay, so on one side of the column, let's say the left one, you write down all your visions, all your excitement. On the right side, you write down um, all your skills as well as flaws or what you would consider limitations. If you have a particular physical limitation um, that may not have been attracted. I'm not so much talking about like a disease that you've seemingly attracted to yourself, although you could include that. I'm talking more about like almost things that you were born with, so to speak. Let's say that you're really, really bad at math for whatever reason. That's something to write down, actually. Um, this is just an example. Or perhaps you have, uh, you're limping. You're all, you've always limped or since it early age onward, you've always limped and it doesn't seem to respond that much anymore to how you're thinking. You've cleared up your vibrations, but still you're limping, for example, right? So write that down. Um, perhaps you are really, really perfectionistic in nature. And at a very early age, um, someone taught you, one of your parents perhaps taught you to be really, really careful what other people think. And this has become such a big part of your nature right now. Also write those things down. So, but also talents, if you show a great talent in a certain direction, write these things down. So I want you to make a list again, the left side is all your passions, those vague abstract imaginations, the highest versions of yourself, whatever glimpses you do have, knowing that they're just vague and pale representations of the real thing, but that's okay, just write them down as best as you can imagine them at this point. In the right column, you write down your flaws and your talents, just list all these things randomly, doesn't matter. When you've done that, take a deep breath, be in a state of non-judgment, always be in a state of non-judgment and just appreciate the whole journey, the whole practice that you're doing right now. Appreciate this whole exercise because it's clarifying a lot for you. It's allowing you to step back from your life, not just see it through the tunnel vision of your first person perspective, but it allows again, a more expanded sort of higher minds point of view, bird's eye view of the overall aspects of your life. Now, looking at that list, just sort of in a, in a peaceful state of, I would say, almost meditation or contemplation or reflection, observe that list and sort of go back and forth and see like how they tie into each other. Start making connections, start connecting some of the dots. 
for example, and this, it's a little tricky to come up with examples here because this is so individual and this is so personal and this can be so intricate and complex and a real teaching happens if you start to see these connections for yourself. But for example, um, I'll use an example of my own and this is just one of many. Like I, I've seen over the years many, many connections that I've been able to connect the dots with where suddenly it makes sense why something happened in my past because it has altered my personality in a certain way that allows me when I now look at the left side of the column, even though I would judge it perhaps as a flaw or as a limitation, it's actually somehow perfectly tying in to one of my dreams that I'm becoming more of. So you want to start looking for those connections that are um, somewhat non-linear. They're kind of complex sometimes. They're almost interdimensional in some ways. For example, um, at an early age, um, my father was, was quite precise with his education, meaning um, meaning some people would say strict, socially strict. So I was taught to really be really, really careful in terms of what other people think to make sure that like if we were visiting friends, for example, he would make sure that I would not, you know, be too wild or be too crazy or make sure that um, I would not throw over those glasses. And of course I would. And he would let me know um, that that's what I did in that moment. And by the way, now he's the softest, friendliest guy ever. Um, and he was very friendly and nice, but he did have that, he did project some of that um, perfectionism of his own self image in relationship to others onto me to where from an early age onward, I was very perfectionistic about what other people thought of me. And I was very careful not to um, bump into anyone too much. So I, I, I was raised in a way very careful, very gentle, very aware of other people's um, situation. Now, later on, I've realized that even though it has blocked me seemingly from certain things in life, even though it has been a transformational process, and at the time I would say that it, I struggled with it in some ways. And again, this is just one example, right? Apply this to your own life. I started seeing clear connections. If I had not become such a social um, perfectionist in a way, I would have most likely defeated the purpose of me being here, which is again, the left column of the list, which is to be, let's just say, a teacher of enlightenment for planet Earth. And I would have probably in many ways messed up that um, sort of teacher persona image of responsibility. Now, some of you may laugh right now because you know that I'm very controversial, but imagine had I not had that education, I would have probably looked like a complete out of control, crazy human being to, um, to the people that I actually came here to teach, to which I need to have some kind of relatability in order for them to embrace this message and empower themselves. So had he not precisely taught me certain distortions and lack beliefs, and had I not taken these on, I would have probably been way more out of alignment in the exploration of my theme. So you see something seemingly lacking can actually play a part, play a big part in forming that perfect collaboration of dynamics from past and future and parallel lives and the intention of your blueprint to make you exactly the way that you are. And I'm not saying not to change that because I did have to transform these things. And that's why I can teach about it now. And that's why I can be so free. That's why I enjoy being controversial is because I used to not be at all. While it is my nature to be wild and controversial because that's where I come from, that's my native frequency. But the human being in me was taught to be very, very careful and sensitive to other people's experience and how they see the world, which now allows me to have both simultaneously. I'll be able to be completely controversial while at the same time being able to really sense what people are experiencing in that moment as a reaction to what I'm doing, which has helped me greatly as a teacher. So you see something that's seemingly a flower limitation, once it reveals its true purpose to you, it is seen to be perfect. It's seen to be of assistance. It's seen to be aiding you. So by looking at your own list and going sort of back and forth between what you feel you want to become or the general direction of what you want to become and seeing your flaws and limitations or how we judge them as flaws and limitations because they're perfections, really. They're aids and assistances once transformed and utilized appropriately, um, as well as all of your talents. And you can start to see a clear pattern 
as to how high your mind has intelligently set up your physical body's composition, chose the parents, chose the geography of where you come from, and chose your early life experiences for you, and now how that has played into the rest of your life. Not all of which you might like from a, a physical mind's point of view, but that's okay. Those are negative definitions that you now get a chance to transform and heal so that you can aid and assist others in their own healing process, etc. So you see all of these flaws and, and, and skills, they all somehow play into your overarching journey. That's why I wanted you to write them down because once you start connecting the dots, they, your flaws or seeming flaws and, and sort of edges, as well as your skills can become highly revealing, can put into context, can start to symbolize and make clear to your conscious mind, to your personal physical mind, sort of why you are here and in what general direction you seem to become an embody of, like what you seem to become a body of, embodiment of. What type of a frequency reality are you becoming the embodiment, the example, the radiator of? So this list can become really revealing to you. And the more you start connecting those dots in your everyday life as you go, it may not all make sense at first just looking at the list, but when you apply it to everyday life and you start seeing like, why am I so perfectionistic in this way? Why am I always late? Or why am I this? Or why am I that? These seeming things, and you can start to notice how they are actually subtle balances that ensure that the greater good of your journey can be completed more efficiently. So see beyond the surface of your persona and appreciate the perfection of it all. You might not be perfect on a personal level because nobody is. As a human being, there's always going to be flaws, but that's okay because they're actually supporting the experiential reality and the theme, the exploring of a theme that you are here to do. So in that sense, you are perfect precisely because you have those flaws. Without those flaws, your journey, your exploration of your theme could have not nearly been as successful as it has been already and will continue to be the more conscious you come, become of it. So practice this. And as always, repeat this lesson at least once more. I've shared a lot very quickly. So view this video again or listen to the audio or read the transcript again. Share with us perhaps your list in the forum help other people become more clear on their own theme and gain gradually. This will be a gradual process, but clearly gradually you will start to understand more and more of your theme as you start connecting the dots. And then it becomes easier and easier to understand more about your future while simultaneously, of course, as always, keeping your focus on what excites you the most now, what you are intuitively called towards the most now and open up to that higher intuition coming from the non-physical mind. And like I said, meditate on this principle. As always, meditation can be an answer. Quiet the mind and meditate on the idea of what is my theme. You can imagine a blank slate if you want a blank widescreen, kind of like this one. Imagine that in your mind and ask your higher mind to project whatever you are capable and ready of receiving right now, symbols, images, perhaps nudges that reveal more of your theme. Ask it for more information, more clarity on your theme and promise that you will not run away with these concepts and start playing ahead of your own game, so to speak. Understand that in order to receive more clarity on your theme, you also need more maturity and more vibrational clarity of understanding that you'll always have to accept and appreciate where you're at in this moment. Otherwise you can never allow your now to unfold those parallel realities that then express more fully the theme and the being that you are. You need to be able to open up and flower right here. If you want those realities to shift through your consciousness, they will be blocked from you if you're not mature enough to understand that you're perfect as you are and that you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. You always got to take it from where you're at, but never let your present circumstances indicate your vibration or limit your expansion or imagination in any way at the same time. You can all do this, might sound complex, but this is all simultaneous. You are adepts, you are creators, you are infinite beings, you are capable of what I'm teaching here to embody these things that I'm teaching here. Much love to you, do the meditation and do the exercise with the paper and see it in your own life, see it unfold bit by bit, start connecting the dots and ask for greater guidance and you will always become more aware of the guidance that's already given to you all the time.